We strongly demand and expect that Canadian exports are used in a way that fully respects human rights. We have frozen export permits before when we had concerns about their potential misuse, and we will not hesitate to do so again. The federal government has condemned the killing of Saudi journalist Jamal Khashoggi, and it says Saudi Arabia's account of what took place at the Saudi consulate in Istanbul doesn't add up. But for now, Canada plans to continue with a massive arms sale to Saudi Arabia, preserving the 3,000 Canadian jobs that go with it. Today, the Prime Minister called a national security meeting to discuss how Canada should proceed, and the CBC's Katie Simpson is here to tell us what went on there. Hey, Katie, update us on where the government, uh, what the government is saying about this right now. So this morning, unbeknownst to reporters, there was an emergency meeting held within the Prime Minister's office with the most senior members of the government, the most senior members of Justin Trudeau's cabinet to talk about what to do next about Saudi Arabia uh, and exactly what information they have that's credible and what is not credible and, and how they're going to act next. Christian Freeland was actually hosting her incoming Mexican counterparts today over at Foreign Affairs, but of course the questions that dominated her news conference were about what Canada is going to do in light of what its G7 allies Germany has done, saying that it can't export arms to Saudi Arabia under the current circumstances. Uh, we put that re question repeatedly to Christa Freeland today. She wouldn't specifically say whether Canada's $15 billion Saudi arms deal uh, would be put on hold or would be revisited as a result of what's happened with Jamal Khashoggi, uh, but she did offer some insight into Canada's next steps. There are very important questions about the entire relationship with Saudi Arabia that need to be asked. Uh, this meeting that the Prime Minister convened was an important part of that conversation inside our government. And we are having these serious conversations with our partners and allies. So she said entire relationship with Saudi Arabia that Canada needs to examine. Again, we pushed her specifically to see if she would say anything about uh, where the $15 billion light armored vehicle sale stands. She wouldn't say, uh, but she did say that she's having a number of conversations with her uh, her allies uh, from different parts, uh, different G7 allies like Germany. She's having a conversation with her counterpart there. Uh, but in terms of what Canada specifically is going to do next, uh, she wouldn't say. What kind of pressure is she and the rest of the federal government facing right now on that lab deal? Well, Justin Trudeau faced some questions from the NDP uh, in the House of Commons today. Uh, they brought this issue up a number of times. There have been a number of human rights groups that have really been calling on Canada to revisit this issue, not just in light of what happened to Jamal Khashoggi, uh, in light to the fighting in Yemen and accusations of war crimes going on there, uh, in light to the jailing of dissidents. And, uh, the, of course, Canada uh, had a very... Uh, its relationship with Saudi Arabia was, was jolted because of Canada Canada's criticism of that. And now, of course, with the murder of Jamal Khashoggi. Have a listen to some of Question Period today. Can the government stop the double speak and stop arming rogue nations like Saudi Arabia? We have frozen export permits before when we had concerns about their potential misuse, and we will not hesitate to do so again. Yeah. So what the Prime Minister just said right there about Canada freezing uh, export permits before, it leaves some questions. Does he specifically mean that $15 billion deal, or is this just an overarching, more general comment that moving forward, that's something Canada will do? Uh, there are going to be a lot more questions about this going forward. For sure. Thanks a lot, Katie. The CBC's Thanks. Katie Simpson. So how should the federal government proceed? Joining me now from the House of Commons foyer, Andrew Leslie is the Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Conservative Defence Critic James Bizan, and Matthew Dubay is the NDP's Public Safety Critic. Hi to all three of you. Thanks so much for being here. I really appreciate it. Uh, Mr. Leslie, I'm going to start with you. What would it take for the government to break the arms co contract with Saudi Arabia? The first thing we have to do is continue to work with our friends and allies and get a fact-based independent investigation into the facts surrounding this murder of this journalist. Let's make sure that we don't actually rush to judge in its completeness until we have the facts in front of us. Once we have the facts, then we can make a reasoned decision. And by the way, our heart goes out to all the relatives and friends and to the fiancé and of course to the entire family of expatriates around the world. Is that arms deal under review right now? The discussion is centered on gathering facts. There's a whole host of options. I'm not going to go into any of them right now. But the, the key point in all of this is let's make a fact 
based decisions. So far, we're getting rumors from Turkish radio. We're getting, of course, the admitted killing by the Saudi authorities. But we're not sure of any of the details yet. And that will come out quite shortly, but it's got to be open and transparent. But that doesn't answer the question with respect about whether or not specifically this deal is under review. You're correct. I haven't. So you're not going to say, your government will not say whether or not it is reviewing the deal? We want to make a fact-based decision. We're not yet at a stage of deciding yes or no or maybe. But Let's actually make the decision based on the evidence that's provided to us by independent sources that are verifiable. To, to be clear, though, I'm not asking you about the veracity of what Saudi Arabia did or whether you're going to break the deal. I'm simply asking whether or not, given, in light of what's happening, I mean, Germany has already suspended its exports, so it's not out of left field. Given what's happened so far, is it even being reviewed? Right now, we're gathering the facts, and we're not prepared to do any further discussions on what options might be. And as hard as you press, I'm still going to stick to that story, because it's true. Mr. Bazan, your government approved the initial deal. Do you still support it? So, uh, actually, just, just first and foremost, we, we, we support the G7 and the government's uh, approach on this is that we have to make sure, first and foremost, that, they, that we have an accountable, transparent investigation into what happened uh, in, in Turkey at the embassy. Uh, uh, the, the, the perpetrators of, of the murder of Jamal Khashoggi are, are, are brought to justice. We're suggesting that we use sanctions underneath the uh, Sergei Meninsky law, the justice for victims of, cor of, of uh, corrupt foreign officials, that those people that will use human rights and other countries are held to account and are sanctioned. So that's an option. And then we do expect to see from the government, Justin Trudeau promised over two years ago that they would start giving us a report on all our arms exports underneath the export permits that they provide through foreign affairs, a report on making sure that those export permits are being uh, respected. And so we want to make sure that the labs that we have sent that were built down in London, Ontario by GDLS, that uh, those labs are being used for what the permit was intended. And we expect that report to be tabled. This would be a good time for that report to be put on, on the floor so that we can actually take a look at it as parliamentarians and as Canadians to determine whether or not our labs are being used appropriately. The sanctions you mentioned, Mr. Bazan, how would you determine where to target them? And I ask because, of course, we've been provided a list, you know, a so-called list from Saudi Arabia of who they say it, you know, were involved in this. Is that who you would target, or how would you determine who to target? Well, I think we'd look at that list. I want to make sure that we see the independent uh, investigation as well and see who they point to. Uh, and then there's also processes that the government can do, and that, that's one of the problems right now that we have. We have the Medinsky Law. We have sanctioned, you know, uh, uh, over 100 people on that sanctions list already, including President Maduro from Venezuela. Uh, I think that uh, everybody in the Saudi Kingdom that, that are associated with uh, the, this crime uh, against uh, the freedom of the press, uh, as well as the other human rights abuses that take place in Saudi Arabia, those individuals should be independently verified, and then that added to the Medinsky sanctions list. Even if they include the crown prince for example if he's a, if he's tied to it uh, I think he, he he's open for uh, being sanctioned and uh, I think that's uh, one of the things that uh, the government has to take a hard look at they didn't hesitate in, in bringing forward sanctions on President Maduro and if the crown prince gave the order to uh, take out a, a dissident like uh, Jamal Khashoggi then uh, there, there should be sanctions against him Mr. Dubey over the weekend your leader Jagmeet Singh said that the NDP it would break this contract and that the government should break the contract how would you do that without risking the 3,000 jobs that are at stake? Well, certainly we, our hearts would go out to the workers in the event that they would lose their jobs. I think that that's a longer term question for the government to address. But it's about who we want to be as a country and the role we want to play on the international stage. And we can talk about fact finding and all this. But at the end of the day, there's a reason why no one has a hard time believing that this journalist was in all likelihood murdered by the Saudi regime. Why? Because this is just another one example in a long list of human rights abuses, whether it's war crimes, famine and death in Yemen, whether it's the detaining and torturing of Raf Badawi, his sister also being detained. I think ultimately we have a, a hard question to ask ourselves and as far as we're concerned the answer is quite easy is what, how do we want to be engaged on the world stage and selling weapons to a regime that has so clearly showed itself to be a violator of human rights is just not the right way to go. And the fact is, is that with the arms trade treaty that Canada signed on to, uh, given the, the, the enacting legislation didn't even contain an element that's key to that treaty, which is in light of new information, being able to break a contract. And it seems 
it's pretty clear here that more and more as the years go on, we're seeing more new information about just what this regime is engaged in, whether it's with their own dissidents in their country or even in, in other parts of, of that part of the world. I take your point around the, um, I guess, the the ethics of it all, but, you know, what, do, do you not have some empathy for the government and, and the previous one when considering the jobs that are that are at stake? And even, for example, your own party's uh, MP in the area, I mean, Matheson, was not as unequivocal as you just now. Mm. Well, at the end of the day, the you know we st we were the party of working people, and we certainly empathize with that and understand that we need to move forward. But on all sorts of issues in human history, as we've as we've advanced, there's sometimes ha it has cost jobs, and the key thing for government is to make sure that 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 those people can can find work and and keep providing for their families. But ultimately, at the end of the day, and interestingly enough, unions are some of the strongest voices for standing up for human rights. And so I think we can come to an understanding here that, that there is a hard decision that the government needs to be made here. I have no doubt about that. But we also think that there's a pretty clear answer in light of so many uh, instances of of not respecting human rights, because this is only just another element, another shoe that has dropped in this long list of, of crimes committed by the Saudi regime in a variety of ways. Mr. Leslie, does Mr. Dubey have a point that this is not the only incident that we're dealing with, we're talking about when it comes to Saudi Arabia? There are many questions, as my colleague Katie pointed out at the top of the hour, around the, uh, the, the war in Yemen and the activities in Yemen. There are questions about Raif Badawi and other dissidents who have been jailed and, and, and uh, sometimes tortured. I mean, do you really need to wait until every single fact is ascertained in this in, in this case and, and whenever that might even happen? We will get to the bottom of what actually happened. So far, all we can report with certainty is what the Saudi authorities have admitted to, which is that the journalist died at the Saudi embassy in Turkey. After that, everything is innuendo or rumor. Look, what, this, How are you enraged, find those this facts? has enraged all of us. We understand that, but let's not Let's not rush to making a precipitous decision when over the course of the next couple of days, perhaps slightly longer, but not much, a credible, transparent investigation will give us the facts. Then we can have a discussion of what the options are. Did Germany rush? I'm sorry? Did Germany rush? Germany's decision is theirs alone. That's for up to them for decide. I'm not going to comment one way or another because I don't know the circumstances and the actual facts that they were basing their decision on. Mr. Uh, Bazan, do you think that those facts, that an independent in investigation will actually ever happen? I sure hope it does. I think that uh, G7 nations are expecting it. Uh, the relationship between uh, Saudi Arabia and the rest of the world uh, will largely be determined by the actions that they take going forward on this investigation. And I would also encourage the government of Canada to look at other avenues uh, to continue to stress uh, our support for, for human rights, uh, to make sure that, that through back channels and through diplomatic measures that they are having these discussions with the Saudi Kingdom. And, and more importantly, also going into the UN and saying, well, Saudi Arabia is notorious for, for, for not respecting the rights of women, but yet they sit on the, uh, one of the UN committees on human rights, that so they should be actually removed from that, especially in light of the current investigation. And, and until that uh, investigation is wrapped up, they should be suspended from some of these committees that they sit on. Mr. DeBay, the final word to you. Well, at the end of the day, we have a question that we need to ask ourselves, and what's the role that Canada wants to play on the world stage? And I think Saudi Arabia has made pretty clear with its actions over a number of years now that they don't respect human rights, they don't respect the freedom of the press or dissidents in their own country. And so I think at the end of the day, uh, it's pretty clear that the decision that needs to be made is to end uh, this arms sale. And ultimately, we can argue about the rumors and the facts related to this issue. But as I said off the top, if everyone is so convinced that, it is, that this is likely a murder, which I think everyone seems to agree on, there's a reason for that because this is a regime that has proven itself time and again to be disrespectful of human rights and Canada has to make a choice over what kind of regimes we want to be supporting in the world today. Okay, I'll leave it there. Thank you so much to all three of you for the discussion. Really appreciate your time. Thanks to Andrew Leslie, James Bazan and Matthew Dubay.